In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve linear equations involving fractions. We're going to go through three examples, see if you can do these on your own, and you can compare your work with what we're doing here together. But I just want to go over some different suggestions here to help you when you're solving these types of equations. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to simplify the left side of the equation, the right side of the equation, then we can proceed to step two, which is to get the variables and numbers on opposite sides. And lastly, we want to solve for just one of the variable. So first step, we're just going to go ahead and distribute that two-fifths into the parentheses. And remember, when you multiply a fraction times a whole number, you want to multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. So I'm going to say 2 times 10 is 20, 5 times 1 is 5, and same thing here, 2 times 8 is 16, and 5 times 1 is 5. And I'll just bring down that 12. Now, 20 divided by 5 we know is equal to 4. Okay, so that's 4x. And then on the right side, you can see we still have a whole number 12. But our goal is to get the variables on one side, the numbers on the opposite side. So that's step number 2. And so what we want to do here is we want to get rid of the 16 fifths, and we're going to do that by doing the opposite. Instead of subtracting 16 fifths, let's go ahead and add 16 fifths. And you can see that they're going to cancel one another out because one's positive, one's negative. But over here on the right side of the equation, you can see that one of these fractions has a denominator of 5, the other has a denominator of 1, because remember, anything divided by 1 is itself. So what we have to do when we're adding fractions, we have to get that common denominator. See this 1 down here and this 5 down here? We want to find the smallest number that both 1 and 5 go into evenly. And in this case, it looks like the smallest number that they both go into evenly is going to be 5. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply this fraction the numerator and denominator by 5, because remember when you multiply by 5 over 5, that's like multiplying by 1, because anything divided by itself is going to be 1. So now if I multiply horizontally, the 12 times the 5 is going to give us 60. The 1 times the 5 is going to give us 5. And then we're going to add the 16 fifths to it. So remember when you add fractions, you add the numerators, but you keep that denominator the same. So you don't want to add the 5s and say that's 10. You just add the numerators. And so now we're on to that last step here, which is to solve for just one of the variable, just 1x. So we would say, hmm, how can I just get this x by itself? How can I get rid of that 4? Well, normally we'd see that the 4 and the x are next to each other, which means that they're multiplied together. But you could say, well, hmm, what's the opposite of multiplying by 4? That would be to divide by 4. Or what I like to do sometimes, instead of dividing when you're working with fractions, is think about multiplying by the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by 1 fourth to both sides because again, remember 4 is like 4 over 1. The numerators are going to, and denominator here are going to cancel because 4 goes in here once, 4 goes into here once, and we're left with 1 over 1, which is just 1x. So it looks like we're getting x is equal to uh, 76 fifths, 76 fifths times 1 fourth. And again, we can multiply the numerators together, denominators together, or we can do a little bit of cross-reducing. 4 goes in here once, 4 goes in here 19 times, and so we're left with 19 fifths. Uh, and we can also write this as a mixed number. 5 goes into 19 three whole times with 4 left over. So we could say that x is equal to 19 fifths or 3 and 4 fifths, and you've got that first one done. Now, Another suggestion, another possibility we could talk about is clearing the denominators, and we'll talk about that in the next example. So let's go on to example number two. Okay, so for the second example, you can see that we have our variables on both the left and the right side of the equation. And our goal, remember, is to get the variables on one side, the numbers on the other side of the equation. Just think of that equal sign as like a uh, dividing line. Okay, so sometimes I even like to draw a little dashed or dotted line. And so it doesn't matter what side you get them on, as long as they're on the opposite sides. So I tend to like to get the variables on the left and the numbers on the right, but you can do it the other way around, that's no problem. But the technique I want to show you in this problem is how to actually get rid of those fractions altogether and just make your, your problem solving here a lot easier. And so what I'm going to recommend here that we do on this problem is we make every quantity here, every term into a fraction. If it's a whole number, remember you can put it over one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to look at all of these denominators 
and we're going to ask ourselves, what's the lowest common denominator? Meaning, what's the smallest number that 3 goes into, 2 goes into, 6 goes into, and 1 goes into? And in this case, the smallest number that they all go into, that lowest common multiple, is going to be 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this whole equation, we're going to multiply the entire thing by 6. Now, if you don't like that method the way I've done it right here, you can also think of just multiplying the left side of the equation by 6 and the right side of the equation by 6. Keep in mind that 6 is the same as 6 over 1. So when we go ahead and distribute that 6 into the parentheses, we're going to make sure we multiply it to all the terms. Remember, the terms are separated by minus or plus. They're basically the, the groups here. So when we do that, let's see, we've got 6 times 5 is 30. 1 times 3 is 3, and if we do that to the 1 half, 6 times 1 is 6, and 1 times 2 is 2. And over here, on the right side, 6 times 1 is 6, and 1 times 6 is 6, and then 6 times 3 is 18, and 1 times 1 is 1. Okay, so now what you'll notice is we can reduce these fractions. So 30 divided by 3 is just going to give us 10x. 6 divided by 2 is going to give us 3. 6 divided by 6 is 1x, or we could just say x. And 18 divided by 1 is just 18. So the nice thing about this now is that we've cleared the denominators. We've gotten rid of those fractions. It makes it a lot easier to solve. But remember, we're still solving equations, which means we want to get the variables on one side, the numbers on the opposite side. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, get the variables on the left. Now to get the variables on the left, another way of saying that is you have to get rid of them on the right. So let's say I want to get rid of that x right there. How can I get rid of it? Well, I'm going to do the opposite. Instead of adding x, see that's a positive x or adding x, I'm going to subtract x from both sides of the equation. Remember, you always want to do the same thing to the left and the right to keep the equation balanced. Then I like to just kind of think of it as an addition problem. I'm just adding straight down here bring your equal sign down, keep everything lined up. That'll make it a lot easier to just stay organized and avoid making any mistakes. Now we've got the variables here on the left. We want to get the numbers on the right. So how can you get those numbers onto the right? Again, you want to do the opposite. So instead of subtracting 3, we're going to add 3. And remember, whatever you do to the left, you want to do to the right. The negative 3 or the minus 3 and the positive 3 cancel, leaving us with 9x. 18 and 3 is 21. We're almost to our last step here. We want to solve for just one of the variable, just 1x. So what we can do here is instead of multiplying by 9, let's just divide both sides by 9. So if we do that, the 9's cancel. We get 21 over 9. Keep in mind, we can try to reduce this fraction. It looks like uh, 3 goes into both the numerator and the denominator. So if we divide the top and bottom by 3, we're going to get 7 thirds. Or 3 goes into 7 twice with one left over. So we could say 7 thirds or 2 and 1 third. So that's another way of doing it and that's clearing the denominators by finding that lowest common denominator and multiplying both the left and the right sides or you can think of multiplying the whole equation by that number to clear the denominator. Okay let's look at one more example. See if you can do this next one on your own. Okay so for number three well, see if you can do this problem. I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to approach it the same way that we've been doing uh, before, which is just to do the distributive property. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that negative 2 sevenths, I'm going to distribute it into the parentheses, and again, keeping in mind that any whole number can be written as a fraction over 1, like a number over 1. So we're going to multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. Same thing here with the 7, we're going to multiply the numerators together, which remember a negative 2 and a negative 7, those two negatives, when you multiply two negatives together, you get a positive. Okay, again, multiplying the numerators together, denominators together, and same thing on the right side. 1 times x is x, 2 times 1 is 2, or you can think of this as 1 half x, and then same thing here, 3 times 1 is 3, and 2 times 1 is 2. So now what we want to do is, I think this is kind of the nicest way of doing it, is go ahead and multiply by that lowest common denominator. We want to clear the denominators just to get rid of the fractions. And we have to ask ourselves a little question here. We have to say, well, hmm, what is the lowest common denominator? So meaning, what is the smallest number that 2 goes into and 7 goes into? 
Well, it looks like they uh, all go into the number 14. That's probably the smallest. So we're going to multiply the left side by 14, the right side by 14. You can see we're still keeping that equation balanced. Now I'm going to show you a little another technique here that you can do. Instead of multiplying the numerators and denominators together, you can do a little bit of cross-reducing. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to go ahead and look at this 14 and the 7. I can see that they reduce. So 7 goes into 14 twice, right? So what happens now is when I multiply 2 times negative 4, I'm going to get negative 8. And then you can see 1 times 1 is just going to be 1. So I just get negative 8x. So what I'm doing is I'm kind of reducing it as I go. But one thing when you do it this way is you have to be careful that when you go back here uh, to distribute to the next term, like when we go to distribute this 14 to this uh, fraction here, we are going to want to um, go ahead and, and basically remember that this is 14 and it's not 2. You know, So we want to go back to that original 14. So everything is being multiplied by 14. Now another way to, to look at this, maybe that'd be a little bit less confusing, <laughs> is if you decide, okay, I'm going to multiply it through by that common denominator 14, what you might want to do, just so you don't get confused, is go ahead and right next to every one of these terms, go ahead and write down 14 over 1, 14 over 1, 14 over 1. Like you're multiplying every, every term, every group, every fraction by 14 over 1. So uh, that way, you just you won't forget that, uh, you know, that you're doing it to each term. Then when you do it this way, you can see you can reduce. 7 goes into 14 twice, and when you multiply the numerator together, you get negative 8. Denominator together, you get 1, and of course, negative 8 divided by 1 is just negative 8. Same thing here, you can do a little cross-reducing, and we're going to get 28. And same thing here, a little bit of cross-reducing, we're getting 7x. And then over here, a little bit of cross-reducing, we're getting 21. So that's a nice technique to get rid of the fractions clear those denominators, and now it's just more like a regular problem that you're familiar with. And so what I would do at this point is I would go ahead and get the variables on one side and numbers on the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the uh, variables on the left, and to do that we have to get rid of them on the right side. So I'm going to get rid of them by doing the opposite. Again, make sure you do it to both sides of the equation. And now what we want to do is we want to get the numbers on the other side. And the way we're going to do that is instead of adding 28, we want to get rid of that 28 on the left by doing the opposite, subtracting 28. So let's do that to both sides. Again, I like to keep it real organized, keep those equal signs lined up. Sometimes I think students kind of get a little bit lost in some of the arithmetic, and, and that's an easy way to kind of make a mistake. So try to keep everything organized right neatly. Uh, that helps as well, just so you don't misinterpret what you've written. Okay, and then when you can see I'm just treating like an addition problem. I'm just adding straight down. The 28s are canceling. And then the last step is always to solve for just one of that variable. So we say, hmm, what's the opposite of multiplying by negative 15? Well, we want to divide both sides by negative 15. Or the way that I like to think about it is multiply by the reciprocal. So I would actually multiply by a negative 1 15th to the left and the right sides. This way you can see that this is going to give you 15s are going to cancel and negative times a negative is a positive so that just gives us x. Here the 7 is like 7 over 1 and when we multiply the numerators together we get positive 7. Denominators together we get positive 15 and you can see that's our final result. We don't have to reduce that any further. So great job. Keep working on your solving equations involving fractions, and I'll see you in the next video.